Okay, so we got a goblin here, and this goblin, if I scroll up, has subdivision history. So we have subdivision level one, two, three, all the way to level five, millions of polygons here. Uh, and if I start sculpting detail on this head, of course I can, I can do that. However, before I start doing that, I might want to come back to this pristine forehead version of the character. So one way to do that is I can scroll down here in my tool menu to where we have morph target. And you can see while this is clean geometry, or clean as in he has a nice smooth forehead, I'm gonna store these vertex positions, this nice smooth version of our uh, mesh. And then past that point, past hitting that point, because it's stored these in memory, now I can start sculpting more detail. And again, while I'm sculpting detail, I'm adding more and more undo history to my undo slider. However, Remember, we stored in memory with that store morph target, that pristine version of his forehead. So I can go in here to B uh, to go into my brush menu, M to narrow it down to the brushes that start with the letter M. And in this case, morph G is morph brush. So you can hit G on your keyboard or just select the morph brush. Now what the morph brush is gonna do is say, okay, you stored those points in history that will allow me to morph back to it. So with my, I think by default, the Z intensity would be 25 for this brush. You'll be able to go in here and morph back to your original state. Now you can see if you brush lightly, it'll just kind of slightly morph back. If you go up here and say Z intensity of 100, it'll really morph it back to the original positions. If you turn on polyframe over here, hit shift F on your keyboard, you can see it's not a camera projection. Like if you go to the side here and you know use your morph brush, it's literally just returning these points to their original position. There's no camera projection like the history recall brush, which we'll get into in a second. So this is a way to use your morph brush to kind of go through here and morph in and out detail. So in this case, we just morphed, use the morph brush to morph back to our original state. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'm gonna say delete morph target and I'm gonna switch over to my standard brush again. And this time we're gonna add some more detail. And again, you can just kind of sculpt and use as much information as you want. And if we store a morph target now, it's gonna store those into history. So now we can continue you know, sculpting on top of this. And then if we hit BMG to go to our morph brush, it will morph back to where we captured, which was this little scribbly version. However, what if I was like, oh no, I wanted it to kind of morph back to my original head position. All you need to do is step back through your history here until it gets that pristine forehead, control click this point in history. You can go all the way forward now, all those changes that you've made, and you can continue sculpting if you want, add some more detail, add some more detail. And now when I use my morph brush, instead of it looking for any point where I stored a morph target, it will look at my undo history. So in fact, I can delete my morph target out of here, no longer relevant. It's looking at this point in history and it will morph to that with my morph brush. So. BMG to grab my morph brush again. And in this new version of ZBrush, ZBrush 2023.2, morph brushes will now morph back to that point in history. So again, I don't even have to have a morph target stored. It's already stored one in history for me using control and clicking that point in the undo history. So now I can morph back to this state. Now you may be thinking, just like I mentioned earlier, well, isn't this something that recall uh, the recall brush will do? So if I hit B on my keyboard, H to narrow it down to my H brushes, and you're gonna see there's a history recall brush. If you wanna know more about this brush, this is introduced in ZBrush 2020, so you can go to my YouTube channel, ZBrush 2020, what's new? If you scroll down, there'll be videos on the history recall brush and project history. And we're gonna you know, explain a little bit of it, but if you wanna deep dive, that's where you're gonna to wanna to do that. So let's talk about the differences there. So I'm gonna hit uh, the comma key on my keyboard to bring up my light box. I'm gonna go in here to brush, and we're going to grab over here in the stitches folder, we're gonna grab stitch one ZBrush uh, brush. And on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off X symmetry. And I'm just going to run a stitch across his face and over around here. And we'll say, okay, we've got a nice Frankenstein look going. So again, we can go through here. We have subdivision history. We can turn X symmetry back on. We can go through here and start modifying his face. Let's switch back over to the standard brush and maybe the clay buildup brush. And we're making changes and we're making changes and we're sculpting detail and stuff like that. Maybe putting some veins in his head or whatever. And we'll go back up to subdivision level five. And I might be thinking, you know, I don't mind this part right here, but I really, uh, I don't need this whole loop over his head. So what I used to have to do was again, go back through my undo history and look for that pristine version of the head. Again, control click. If it was already control click, so if you control click it again, it will just unstore any history verts in here. So if I control click this, oops, let's go back one. 
There we go. Control click this point in history, go all the way forward in our history. And we could use the history recall brush, brush for this. So again, we have X symmetry turned on. So if we go to BHR uh, to select our history recall brush, the first thing it's gonna do is yell at you. Because this is a camera projection brush, essentially where the camera is looking is going to determine how the points project back to the mesh. Um, having your X symmetry button on is gonna cause problems. So you have to tap X on your keyboard to go out of X symmetry, number one. And then number two, what you have to do is look kind of straight down at the object so that when you project these points back to their uh, uh, the position you have stored in history, it will do a generally good job. You can see there's a little bit of warbling in here. If you hold down shift, you can smooth that out and then you can project back, again, using the history recall brush. Where you're gonna run into trouble is if you don't keep constantly turning your camera and looking straight down at what you're doing, if you go at kind of like a glancing angle and you start going like, okay, I'm projecting back, yay, I'm projecting back, and actually we'll turn off polyframe so it won't be so obvious. So while we're doing this, and we're not being really careful about where our camera position is or where we're looking or how we're looking at our object, you might be able to go through here and be like, okay, it's, it's projecting back to the original points in history. However, when I turn my polyframe back on, you're gonna see your mesh is getting mangled because essentially what it's doing is projecting based on camera angle. And if you're way down here and not looking straight at the object, it's going to be projecting at a skewed angle and just causing problems in your geometry. Now, let's go back through our undo history again, just to kind of go back to where before we started messing our thing up with uh, the recall brush. Now, the good thing about the history recall brush is it can use arbitrary points. If this point in history was DynaMesh and this point in history was ZeriaMesh and subdivided, it would still be able to project that detail back because it's just a camera-based projection. Whatever detail is over here, it's taking those vertex positions and projecting your new geometry up here back to those positions. So it's completely compatible. The morph brush isn't uh, as compatible as that. It still relies on subdivision history. It has to have a relationship between these points here have to be the same vertex order as the points you're sculpting on here. In our case, totally fine because we have subdivision history, that'll work. If this was a DynaMesh and then you've DynaMesh since then and you have a brand new mesh here, morph target or morph history won't work. But since we're using subdivision history, all we have to do is hit BMG on our keyboard and again, even though we don't even have a morph target stored, it's still looking at these points in history. It has subdivision history, so the vertex order hasn't changed. We can have X symmetry turned on if we want to, and now we can just morph brush back to those original vertex positions. And again, if I turn on my polyframe as I'm doing this, it does, it, it goes, again, it goes, does a beautiful job. It's just going back to those original vertex positions. I can do it with X symmetry on, I can go at a skewed angle, I can make a really big brush size, doesn't matter because it's just returning those vert positions back. Oops. BMG, it's returning those vert positions back to where they were originally. It's not camera projecting them back. So it's a lot cleaner of a result. So that's a kind of a roundabout way to say morph brushes now look at undo history. You can kind of use it like you can uh, his the history recall brush. Uh, there's some pros to the history recall brush. Essentially the big one is you can use arbitrary geometry. A DynaMesh can be projected to a subdivided mesh. The morph brush requires the same vertex order, so it has to be uh, a subdivision mesh to the same subdivision mesh. Only now you can go through here through your history. And again, if like if we had these details on here and we wanted to project those, control click those points in history, go forward to where we were, where we had a smooth head mesh, and now using our morph brush, we'll morph in whatever changes we had uh, at that point in history. And again, you could use the project history brush to do this, um, but you would have to turn off X symmetry, you know, do half of it, smart resim the result over to the other side. And now you'd also have to be very careful to move your camera around so that you're projecting straight back onto the model. So there are some real benefits to using uh, the morph brush with this history uh, in ZBrush 2023.2. Uh,